A new type of domain controller introduced in Windows Server 2008 is a read-only domain controller. So imagine you have a branch location that you cannot physically secure. A read-only domain controller can be used to have a local domain controller available, but it's only read-only. It only replicates from another domain controller in the main office. It can't make any changes. So if that location was compromised in some way, someone cannot make a change on that domain controller and it would replicate and affect the rest of the domain. Additionally, I can configure that only certain user passwords are cached on that domain controller. So if I had 20 people at a location, I can control only those 20 users have their passwords cached on that server instead of the entire 10,000 people from my company. This means again, if that machine was compromised in some way and someone ran a brute force attack against the passwords, they would only compromise the 20 passwords cached locally. And a great feature is I can go and delete that RODC record in Active Directory and it will tell me these 20 accounts have their passwords cached. Should I reset those passwords now? So it really removes the risk of those compromised accounts. And it can have read-only DNS and of course Global Catalog is read-only anyway. So I want to quickly talk about the process to create a new domain. So I'm going to go over to this test DC that I showed previously and I'm going to add a role. It's going to be on my local machine and it's going to be Active Directory Domain Services. And I'm going to say restart if required and install. So it's going to add all the code for the Active Directory. Now, prior to Windows 2012, there was a DC promo process that was actually used to go and initiate a domain creation or adding a new domain controller to an existing domain. DC promo is really gone. The process has been rewritten to make it a lot more friendly. It's all driven through server manager. The old unattend answer file you used to be able to create with DC promo has now been replaced with PowerShell. And what you'll see when I create this is it will show me the PowerShell that I would use to actually go ahead and create these capabilities automate this in the future. So that's complete. Now it's telling me there's a process I have to perform. So promote this server to a domain controller. I'm going to say add a new forest and I'm just going to call this test.local. Because it's the first domain controller in a new forest, I can say it has to be global catalog. I want it to be DNS. It cannot be a read only DC. I can say, what do I want to start my forest domain level? So if I know I'm only going to add Windows 2012 DCs, then great, I'll just use Windows 2012. If I knew I was going to have to add 2008, then I would say 2008, for example. I give it a directory services restore mode password. So this is used if I stop the Active Directory service or I have to boot into directory services restore mode, then we form an Active Directory recovery. There's no delegation because .local is not a real domain. But if this was actually a valid DNS domain, maybe a child of another zone, it can go and create that delegation on that parent to point to these new DNS servers. I specify a NetBIOS name. By default, this is the first part of the DNS name. So I specify test.local. It's saying the NetBIOS name should be test. I can change this, generally not recommended. And this is really for backwards compatibility purposes. We still have this legacy NetBIOS domain name. I can specify paths of where I'm going to store my Active Directory files. Now, in this example, I'm going to leave them as the default, but I'm going to show you a second example where I'm going to change these and I'll explain why. But this is the database of the Active Directory. These are the logs for the Active Directory. And this is sysvol, the system volume where things like group policies exist. Now notice here my view script. This is showing me the PowerShell I would use to go ahead and actually create this domain if I was gonna automate this process. So I could copy and paste that if I needed to use it for other domain creations. And now I'm gonna click install. It's gonna reboot and I would have a new domain control. So that's creating a brand new forest, see a brand new domain as well in my environment and install. So a domain is a single boundary for security accounts, for policy. And I can create relationships between domains so I can create a tree so a tree is a contiguous namespace. So if my tree root domain was called savletech.net, the next domains down could be something like dev.savletech.net, sales.savletech.net. It's contiguous namespace. And they have a parent-child trust relationship which makes these transitive trusts. So over here, I'm gonna create a child domain to my savletech.net. This is a virtual machine. Now I've added a second disk. So I'm going to online this disk. I'm going to initialize it as GPT 
and it's only 20 gigabytes. And I'm going to create a new simple volume. I'm just going to call it AD. Now, the reason I'm doing this and the reason I'm showing you this is on my server, what I did for this domain controller is on the SCSI controller, I added an additional hard drive. Now, why am I doing this? The reason this is important is in Hyper-V, on the IDE controller, what's actually happening here is there is no IO guarantee. If it's booting from IDE, there are limits to actually the way IO guarantees work on a virtual IDE disk. Whereas on virtual SCSI, there are IO guarantees, so we make sure all the rights are actually happening, being committed. So for a database, that's very, very important. So in a virtual world, if I'm using Hyper-V and I'm running domain controllers, I want to make sure my Active Directory database is running on a SCSI connected drive rather than the IDE. Otherwise, you do have some risks of corruption in kind of just an unplanned power off scenario. So I've gone ahead and created my drive. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to add my roles and features again. Exactly the same as before, I'm going to add Active Directory. I'm going to hit install. That's now complete. So I'm going to promote this server to a domain controller. Now this time I want to do something different. I want to create a new domain to an existing forest. I want to create a child domain. I'm going to say select and I'm going to give it an account in the existing domain. And it's checking the domains in that forest. I select the domain. Then I give it a name. So I'm going to add this as dev, which means the name for this domain will be dev net. I click next. So this is creating a tree. Well, it's expanding the tree. There's always a tree, even if there's only one domain in it. My domain functional level is going to be Windows 2012, and I want DNS on this. So this is going to have its own local DNS. I do that DSRM password, and I want to do that DNS delegation. So what's going to happen is on my main DNS server, it's actually going to go ahead and delegate dev.savaltech.net to this new domain controller, these new DNS servers. So it's going to create that DNS delegation. The NetBIOS name is going to be dev. And then what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to change those paths. I want it to store my Active Directory database on that SCSI connected drive. So instead of it being that default C location, I'm going to go ahead and place it on E N T D S. And this is definitely something you want to do for your virtual environments on Hyper-V. I don't want to use IDE. In Windows Server 2012 R2 Hyper-V and Gen 2 or Generation 2 virtual machines, you can boot from SCSI, the virtual IDE goes away anyway, so this is a non-issue. But certainly for today, in 2012, you want to make sure you create that separate disk. Once again, I can see the PowerShell. I'm going to go ahead and install this. So I'm going to go and create this new domain as a child domain of my existing SavileTech.net. And it's going to go and perform all these great DNS configurations for me. So in the past, I had to manually do this. I had to manually go and add the DNS zone. I had to manually add the delegation, manually add conditional forwarders between them. But it does a lot of that work for me now. So I'm going to let that run. And you can see it replicating objects from SavileTech.net. So configuration and schema, remember they are forest wide. Configuration is things like the sites. Schema is forest wide. So even though this is a new domain, it shares the configuration and it shares the schema partition, and it shares the forest DNS zones application partition for the entire forest. While that's rebooting, look what's happened on my main domain controller. I now have a dev, but notice this dev is actually just a delegation. It's actually pointing to this other domain controller. So it's actually moved away, and it's saying, for this portion of the namespace, you need to go and talk to this domain controller. You can see I have other delegations. For example, my underscore MSDCS is delegated to a separate zone, which is replicated to all DNS servers in the entire forest, because this contains entries that are forest-wide, i.e. all of the global catalogs, all the PDCs, the domains, rather than just having it replicated to a single domain. So that reboot is completed. And you can now see it's hosting that dev.savletech.net, which it had that delegation to from the parent SavileTech.net environment. In my configuration, notice it actually forwards up to its parent DC and DNS server for SavileTech.net. So if it doesn't have the answer, it's just gonna forward it up the chain. And it has its own sets of computers, its own domain controller, and users. 
but it would share the existing site configuration from the existing domains because that is a forest wide configuration. Now, when I look, I can see I have a child domain. And if I look at my trust relationships, which we're going to look into more detail, I'll now see a trust relationship between the parent and the child of type child. So this is a transitive Kerberos trust. So that's trees. I create them a contiguous namespace, my new domain dev.savletech.net. I can have different namespaces. So a forest is the Kerberos transitive trust between two trees. So these can actually be different namespaces for each of these separate trees. But because it's a Kerberos trust, every single domain in the entire forest trusts every other domain. So any user in any domain can be given access to any resource in any domain. So this was the overview. Now there are other concepts. There are things like organizational units, which enable us to group objects together, computers, users, and then I can delegate administration. I can apply group policy. I might even use them for organizing objects. And I have some of that in here, when to use them. So that delegation, group policy application, hiding objects, logical grouping. They can't be used for access control entries. So you're not using these instead of groups. This is about structuring for mainly that delegation and that group policy application. So this concludes the overview and this review of Active Directory. And we're now gonna build on this for some more advanced concepts.